Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Tevedi from the Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati. And what we were discussing, we were discussing about the different properties of the enzyme in the course enzyme, Synth enzyme Science and Technology. And in this particular module, we are discussing about the application of enzyme in the different fields. And what we have discussed, we have discussed about the application of the enzyme in the food industry. So if you recall in our previous lecture, we have discussed about the role of proteases, pectinases, alpha amylases and so on in the different types of the uh, you know food industries, right. So uh, in food, apart from food industry, the enzymes are also having the diversified applications into the medical field, right. And in the case of medical field, the enzymes are being used for the diagnostic purposes and as well as enzyme being used as a target to develop the different types of medicines. So in the current lecture, we are going to discuss about how the enzyme can be a diagnostic marker into the, the uh, diagnostic marker and how you can be able to uh, do the enzyme assays for the different enzymes to detect and predict the functional role or the pathophysiological status of a particular organ. So as we say that in, in, in this particular module, we are going to discuss about the application of the enzyme into the food industry, medical field, genetic engineering and environment. So let's start discussing about the application of the enzyme into the medical field. So within the medical field, the enzyme can have the different roles. For example, they can be a diagnostic marker. They could be the enzyme for which you are actually going to target and develop the inhibitor. And these inhibitors will nothing but going to be called as drug. Or in some cases, the enzyme itself is being required to catalyze the conversion of A to B and in that case, the enzyme itself is going to be a therapeutic molecule. So these are the three important aspects. One, where the enzyme is going to be a therapeutic molecule. Second, the enzyme is going to be uh, utilized by the inhibitor and that's how it is actually going to be resulted into the production of drug. And the third aspect is that the enzyme itself is actually going to give you the status of a particular status of an organism or an organ right because the, the enzymes are present in the organs so they can actually be able to give you the status of that particular organ functionally how it, it happens the measurement of the serum level of various numerous enzymes that has been shown to be a clinical significance this is because the presence of these enzymes in the serum indicate that the tissue or the cellular damage that occurs resulting into the release of intracellular component into the blood. So this is what exactly happens, right? So all the organs are actually communicating with each other with the help of the blood, right? And the blood is actually having the two components. One, you have the cellular component, right? Where you have the different types of cells like RBC, you can have the WBCs and so on. The other component is the liquid component, right, or which is also been called as the plasma, right. And the plasma is actually the component which com which communicate between the different types of organs. So you can imagine that uh, in a human body, what you have, you have the different types of organs. You can have the liver, you can have the brain, you can have the kidney, right and you can have the lungs and so on right all these organs are you know uh, are communicating with each other with the help of the blood right because they are sending all their component into the blood and that's how they are actually so imagine a situation that you are taking a drug right for example you are taking a drug uh, for example, paracetamol, okay, I am just giving you an example, it could be uh, just for the experiment, a, a example purpose, yeah. okay. So for example, you have taken the paracetamol, okay. So how you are going to do is, you are going to take the paracetamol orally, right. 
so it what will happen paracetamol will go into the stomach right and from the stomach it will absorb and then from the stomach it will go into the blood right from the blood it will first go into the liver and from the liver then it will actually again enter into the blood and through they are actually going to go into the different organs right it will go into the lungs it goes to brain it goes to the kidney it goes to heart and other places but imagine a situation that you have taken a drug which goes into the stomach and from the stomach it goes into the blood and from the blood it goes into the liver now this drug is actually uh, little cytotoxic right so what happen is that it is actually going to uh, start causing the problem to the liver cells so if you see the liver liver is made up of a cell which is called as hepatocyte right now what will happen is it is starting killing the hepatocyte so if it is hitting the it is causing the toxicity to the hepatocyte the hepatocytes will die okay and as a result they will actually going to release their cytosolic content right which means and once they release the cytosolic content that cytosolic content is actually going to get released into the blood which means cytosolic content means the different types of enzyme right and that means all the enzymes will enter into the blood so if imagine that you are actually taking a drug and that drug is causing the death to, of the hepatocytes then that hepatocyte content is actually going to be present into the blood so now imagine that if i have an enzyme which is specific for the hepatocytes i can detect if i detect that particular enzyme into the blood so for example if i detect that particular enzyme i can very uh, crucially or i can very confidently say that there is a problem to the liver right same is true for the other organs also same is true for the kidney same is true for the brain same is true for the lungs same is true for the heart so this is the basic idea of how you can actually be able to detect the serum level of the enzyme and that actually is indirectly going to tell you that there is a problem to that particular organ because all the organs have their specific enzyme and all these enzymes are called as the marker enzymes okay marker enzyme means they will not be present or they will not be present in high quantity in the other cells so what are the different enzymes what you can actually be able to use for this particular purpose you can actually be use the amino transferases you can have the alanine transferases or alt if the alt is present into the serum then it is also called as the sgpt right then it is called as serum glutamate pyruvate amino transferases then we also have the aspartate amino transferases which is called as ast it is also known as the serum glutamate oxaloacetate amino transferase or sgot so and then we also have the lactate dehydrogenase short form ldh then we have the creatinine kinase or ck it is also known as the creatinine phosphokinase or cpk then we also have the gamma glutamyl transpeptidase ggt and you also have the other enzymes that are also been uh, were assayed under the different clinical situations these enzymes facilitate the enhanced rapid diagnosis of these diseases the enzyme could be classified into the many classes so the first enzyme what we are going to discuss about the alkaline phosphatase so alkaline phosphatase are the group of isoforms which hydrolyze many type of phosphate esters whose natural substrate or the substrates are unknown in both human and animal the major source of alkaline phosphatase are the liver bone kidney and the placenta which means these are actually the organs which are if you see the serum level of alkaline phosphatase very high then you will say that there could be a problem into the liver bone kidney or to the placenta okay in human it is involved in the bone and hepatomillary diseases alkaline phosphatases are also of diagnostic importance in the animal diseases for example the total serum alp activity can be a diagnostic value in the hepatic and bone diseases in the bone uh, in the in the case of dog and cats 
so it actually predicts the any kind of abnormality or pathological situation of the liver as well as the bone diseases values within the individuals are fairly constant for the sequential evaluations the normal uh, level of the alkaline phosphatase activity is between the range of 3 to 13 um, units per 100 ml okay so if the values are above to this then you will say that there will be a problem into the liver and as well as the bone then the second is creatinine kinase the creatinine kinase isoenzymes are the most organ specific serum enzyme in the clinical use they catalyze the reversible phosphorylation of creatinine by the ATP to form the creatinine phosphate, the major storage form of the high energy phosphate required by the muscles. So what reaction creatinine kinase is catalyzing is that it is converting a creatinine into creatinine phosphate and it is actually going to utilize the ATP so it is actually going to take up the ATP and produce the ADP and in this process it is actually going to produce the creatinine phosphate and that's how it is actually going to produce the high energy derivatives this creatinine phosphate is again going to be get converted into creatinine and that's how this high energy phosphate group is going to be broken and that's how it is actually going to release the energy and that energy is actually going to be utilized for facilitating some of the reactions so creatinine phosphate is actually a high energy uh, you know phosphate group or phosphate compound which can be able to use to carry the energy from one place to another place just like atp right atp is also like that so creatinine kinase are found in the many part of body like the heart brain skeleton muscles and the smooth muscles but they have their highly specific activity in the skeletal muscles which means if there is a problem in the skeletal muscles the creatinine kinase level in the serum is actually going to go up so in humans creatinine kinase is associated by the, with the help uh, is associated by with the myocardial infraction and the muscle disease myocardial infraction is a cardio vascular disease okay so it's a, it's a, it's a disease where the heart muscles are actually going to be get affected so it's actually going to in general the creatinine kinase is actually going to give you the indication that there is a problem with the uh, muscular disorders or muscle system actually so increase in creatinine kinase in zero uh, cerebrospinal fluid has been associated with the number of disease disorders in dogs cat cattle and horses the creatinine kinase are much sensitive indicator of muscle damage that generally only large increase in serum activity of a clinical significance. Normal value is in the 10 to 50 uh, international unit uh, per ml. Then we have the alanine amino transferases or AAT, right? It was formerly known as the glutamate pyruvate. Uh, transferases or the GPT or SGPT. Okay, if it is present in serum, then it is going to be called as SGPT. It catalyzes the reversible transamination of the L alanine and 2 oxoglutarate to pyruvate and glutamate in the cytoplasm of the cell. ALT can be found in the liver, skeleton muscles, and heart. The greatest specific activity of ALT in the primates, dogs, and cats are in the in the liver. So it's a liver specific enzyme and it is actually going to be very very specific in the liver it is well established sensitive liver specific indicator of the damage however alt in the tissue of in tissues of the pig horse cattle sheep or goat is too low to be of diagnostic values it is used as an indicator of hepatopathy in toxicological studies which use the small laboratory rodent and as well as the dogs the normal level of the SGPT or ALT is that 0 to 41 uh, international units per deciliter. Then we have the aspartate amino transferase or AAT, right? AAT is also called as the glutamate oxaloacetate uh, transaminated or GOT or it's also called as SGOT, okay? So that is SGPT, this is SGOT, okay? 
and both of these enzymes are being transaminases. So it catalyzes the uh, transamination of the L-aspartate and 2-oxaloacetate to convert the oxaloacetate and glutamate. AST is found in kidney, liver, skeleton muscles, heart and arthrocyte and it is associated with the myocardial, hepatic, parenchymal and muscle diseases in the human and animals. The presence of AST in many tissues make their serum level a good marker of soft tissues but precludes it use as a organ specific enzyme. Since the AST is present in many types of different organs, its specificity is not being used to detect the damage in a particular organ. Red blood cell contain a large amount of AST which leads to the plasma before hemolysis is seen. Uh, normal level of AST is in the 0 to 45 international units. Then we have the sorbitol dehydrogenase or SDH. So sorbitol dehydrogenase, it is also called as l idiotal dehydrogenase or IDH. It catalyzes the reversible oxidation of D sorbitol to D fructose with the help of a cofactor which is called uh, LDAD. The plasma activity is low and that in dog and horse plasma, but appreciably greater in a cattle, sheep and goat serum. Aside from the testes, it is found in the appreciable amount only into the hepatocyte. As a result of this, an increase in plasma sorbitol dehydrogenase is consistent with the hepatocyte damage. SDH is a liver specific in human and all species of animal and hepatic injury appear to be a early source of increased SDH activity. Although the SDH is liver specific in all species, the already established use of ALT in dog and cat has limited SDH as a diagnostic indicator of the hepatocellular damage to horse, cattle and sheep. So SDH is a liver specific enzyme, but since we already have the AST or SGOT, right, sorry, SGPT as a very specific enzyme, uh, people are not very interested to use the sorbitol dehydrogenase as a marker for detecting the damage into the liver. Then we have the lactate dehydrogenase or LDH. So remember that LDH is a cytosolic marker. So it, LDH is present in the cytosol of the cell. It catalyzes the reversible oxidation of pyruvate to lactate with the cofactor NAD+. The equilibrium favors lactate formation, but the preferred assay method is the direction of the pyruvate because the pyruvate has an inhibitory effect on LDH. Lactate dehydrogenase has the isozymes, so you, it can have the different types of isozymes. And LDH can be found in the heart, can be found in liver, arteriocytes, skeleton muscles, platelets and the lymph nodes. In human, it is involved in the uh, detection of the myocardial infractions, hemolysis and the liver diseases. LDH isozymes profile were the first isozyme profile used in the clinical veterinary medicine in an attempt to detect the specific organ damage. The introduction of the moral, more highly organ specific procedure has resulted in the LDH no longer being used commonly in the veterinary medicines. The normal level of the LDH is 60 to 200 international units. Then we have the cholesterolases, cholinosterases or CHE. So serum cholinosterases activity is composed of two distinct cholinosterases. The major substrate is acetylcholine, the neurotransmitter found at the myoneural junctions. Acetylcholinosterases found at the myoneural junction is the true cholinosterases and it is essential in the hydrolyzing acetylcholine so that the junction can be re-established and prepared for the additional signal. The myoneural junction acetylcholinesterase is also found in the red blood cells, mouse, uh, pig, brain and rat livers. Only a small of, uh, amount of acetylcholine esterase is found in the plasma. The acetylcholine, the choli, uh, uh, cholinosterase pla is of plasma is a pseudo cholinosterase butyl cholinosterase which hydrolyzes the vitral choline four times faster than the estercholine and it is also located in the white matter of the brain, liver, pancreas and intestinal mucosa. Decrease in the uh, 
uh, vitriol cholesterase have been reported in the human with the acute infection, muscular dystrophy, chronic renal diseases and pregnancy and as well as the insecticide intoxications. The normal value of cholesterase is in the, ra is our, in the range of 2.25 uh, international units per deciliter. Then we have the lipases. So lipases, as the name suggests, it is actually going to use for the degradation of lipids, right? And that's how it is actually going to produce the fatty acid. So serum pancreatic lipase catalyzes the hydrolysis of triglyceride preferentially at the 1 and 3 position, releasing the two fatty acid and the monoglycerides. Lipase can be found in pancreas and hepatobiliary tract and it is involved in the pancreatitis and hepatomillary disease. Normal levels are with less than 150 units per deciliter. Then we have the amylase. Amylase is a enzyme what is present in the, our saliva and it is actually being used for digestion of the sugar, right? The digestion of the sugar. So amylases are calcium dependent metalloenzyme that randomly catalyzes the, for the hydrolysis of complex carbohydrate glycogen at the 1 to 4 linkages. The product of this action are maltose and limit dextrin. The enzyme is a calcium dependent metalloenzyme which requires one of the number of activator ions such as chloride or bromide. Amylase can be found into the salivary glands, pancreas and the ovaries and it is used as a diagnostic aid for the pancreatitis. Okay, so if you want to read more about this, you can actually be able to download this particular reference and you can be able to get the more detail about how you can be able to use the amylase for detecting the pancreatitis. So since the amylase is present in a very large quantity within the pancreas, so if there will be any uh, uh, disease, any, any uh, damage to the pancreas, it is actually going to release the amylase in serum, right? And that's how you can actually be able to detect the amylase. The normal level are in the range of 30 to 110 units per deciliter. Then we have another enzyme which is called as the glutamyl transferases. So this is a carboxypeptidase which cleaves the C-terminal glutamyl group and transfer them to the peptides and other uh, suitable acceptor. It is speculated that the glutamyl uh, gamma transferase is associated with the glutathione metabolisms. The major source are the liver and kidney are it involved in the hepatobiliary disease and alcoholisms. Uh, cholestic disorder of all species examined result in the increased level of GGT activities. The normal levels are in the range of 0 to 30 international units per deciliter. Then we have a trypsin. Trypsin is a protease, right? And the protease are actually going to be used for uh, so trypsins are the serum protease which hydrolyze the peptide bond formed by the lysine or arginine with the other amino acid. The pancreas has the zymosin uh, trypsinogen which is converted to the trypsin by the internal enterokinase or trypsin itself and secrete them. And since it is present in the pancreas, it is actually going to uh, give you the uh, detection of the pancreas damage. Normal level are in the range of 115 to 350 nanograms per ml and it's actually going to use. So these are some of the enzymes which you can actually be used for diagnostic purpose. Apart from this, the enzymes can also be able to use to perform the different types of assays and these assays are also being used for diagnostic purposes. Uh, so enzymes are being used in the immunoassays. For example, enzyme may also be used as an alternative to radioisotope as marker in the immunoassay and has been used for the determination of variety of proteins and hormones. The role of enzyme in the immunoassay is used to replace radioisotope as marker since they have not hazard here to the health and can be detected by techniques which are more generally available. Any enzyme with a sensitive and convenient assay procedure can be used for this purpose. The two common examples of the enzyme immunoassay are enzyme linked immunosorbent assay ELISA and enzyme multiply immunoassay test or EMIT. ELISA is a very highly specific technique which can be used to detect either antigen or the antibodies. Applications of ELISA include the 
diagnostics for the non-infectious diseases involving the hormones, drugs, serum, component, oncofecal proteins, autoimmune diseases, as well as diagnostic for the infectious disease caused by the bacteria, virus, mucolytic and plastic organisms. The enzyme frequently used in ELISA are the horse radish peroxidase, okay, and the alkaline phosphatase and the beta glycosidase, okay. And the alkaline phosphatase is the most popular enzyme what you are actually going to use in the ELISA, okay. And uh, so, if you remember that the enzyme, uh, if you remember the, uh, the structure of the, uh, the antibody, right? Uh, so, ELISA, you, in ELISA, you are going to use the two different types of antibody. You are going to use the primary antibody, which is actually going to be used for detection of the antigen. And then you are going to use the secondary antibody, which is actually being coupled with the enzyme. So, this is the, you know, the primary antibodies. So, in the primary antibody, you are going to have the antigen binding site. So, this is the antigen binding site and this portion is called as the constant portion and this antigen binding site will actually go and bind to the antigen. So, for example, if this is the antigen, uh, so if this is the antigen, it is actually going to bind the antigen and then it is actually going to relay the signal. But on the back side, it is actually going to be detected by the uh, secondary antibodies, right? So, secondary antibodies are actually being coupled with the enzyme and the most popular enzyme in this case is the horse radish peroxidase. So, when this is actually going to detect, this particular enzyme is actually going to convert the substrate into a product and this mostly these products are either going to give you the light or it is actually going to give you a colored product. And by that, you can actually be able to detect, okay. Some cases, sometimes what happens is that the product is actually going to give you the precipitate or sometimes this product is going to give you a colored product or sometimes it is actually going to give you a light and all these can be detected using the different types of spectroscopic methods. So, let us discuss a little bit about how you can be able to use the horse radish peroxidase and how you can be able to reduce the peroxidase in the uh, for the uh, this kind of applications. So, uh, peroxidases are widely found in the nature in the microorganism, plants, animals where they perform the oxidation of number of substrate using the hydrogen peroxide as an electron acceptors. Peroxidase belongs to the oxidase class of enzyme and their EC number is 11117, okay. They are either named after their source such as horse radish peroxidase and the soybean peroxidase or their substrates such as lignin peroxidase or the cytochrome C peroxidase. Uh, mechanism of peroxidase activity, first the native descent all you can actually be able to read. So, this is what it is actually going to follow a reaction mechanism and that is how it is actually going to oxidize the product and that oxidation product could polymerize with each other because it is actually going to generate the single electrons and that is how it is actually going to form the polymer of the product and that is how the polymer of that product is actually going to give you the color. Uh, as far as the sources of the peroxidase is concerned, it can be from the mammalian sources, plant sources or catalase. So, you can have the halide peroxidase, you can have the prostaglin synthase, you can have intercellular peroxidase, you can have secreted fungal peroxidase, extracellular peroxidase and so on. Similarly, you can have the catalase which is going to be from the animal or bacterial sources. And as far as the production and isolation is concerned, the production and isolation strategies are different for different peroxidases depending upon the sources. For intracellular peroxidases, for the cell lysis is being carried out by the homogenization, the extract and extract is going to be present in the ethyl acetate, ascorbate and PVD followed by crushing the tissue in mortal and mortal. So, these are the different, uh, you know, full scheme what you are going to use for production and isolations. And then, it is actually going to use for different types of applications. So, peroxidases are versatile biocatalysts which are being used for the analytical, clinical and diagnostic purposes. Remember that the peroxidases are being used in ELISA, it is going to be used in western blotting and other kinds of blotting technique as well, right. And it is also going to be used in RIA and all other kinds of immunological techniques what you are going to use. 
they are being used in coupled enzyme assay for the determination of glucose uric acid cholesterol in the biological fluids such as blood plasma and urine the assay system of the corrosives can be manipulated easily to obtain the product that can be monitored by the colorimetric method fluorometric method chemiluminescent method and so on they are also being used for the detection of pesticides immunodiagnostics treatments and detoxification of the wastewater containing the phenols and anilines because what they are going to do is they are going to oxidize these phenolics or the anilines and once they get oxidized they will actually going to form the product you know the adduct and once the these toxic products are actually going to form the adduct their activity is going to be somehow reduced or they are actually going to be isolated from the system Peroxidases are small glycoprotein that are obtained from the uh, from the white sources and able to catalyze the oxidation reaction involving utilizing range of substrate from simple to complex. They are most potent enzyme found in nature and forms an excited ferrel intermediate and exhibiting a redox potential of uh, 920 to 110 millivolts. Novel strategies for the production and purification of peroxidases can be designed in order to increase the yield at a minimal cost. and there is a need to imp in the improvement of fermentation process so that you can be able to produce the peroxidases in the large quantities so this is all about the uh, application of enzyme into the food industry and very briefly we have also discuss about the application of enzyme into the medical field in our subsequent lecture we are going to discuss some more aspects of the en uh, enzyme application in the other fields so with this i would like to conclude my lecture here in our subsequent lecture we are going to discuss some more aspect related to the enzyme science and technology thank you mm -hmm.